Today we're going to talk about concussions, we're going to talk about the engine of all piano technique, we're going to talk a little about sports, but this is all related to how to make a big sound at the piano with as much ease as possible. I'm first going to demonstrate something. That is the opening of the ninth etude by Rachmaninoff of Opus 39. And that's a really fun piece to play. It's so athletic. And when you're working on a piece like that, you don't actually have to go to the gym anymore because you get all of your exercise playing that piece. And hopefully you're playing it as effective as possible using the most efficient mo motions as possible. Um, now, uh, some years ago, almost 10 years ago, I was in a terrible bike accident which left me in an ambulance ride to the hospital. I had a bad concussion. I had no short-term memory. And um, even though at that point, I literally did not know where I was in the country because I'd recently been traveling, I did know at my very core <laughs> to keep saying to the doctors, I'm a pianist, please send me to a specialist because my left arm had taken a real beating and there was some thought that maybe I had broken one of the smaller bones in my left wrist which left me completely panicked. So I didn't know where I was, but I did know I needed to see a specialist because even in that foggy state, I knew that the wrist is the, is the central part of all piano technique. It's the engine of all piano technique. And uh, fortunately, my wrist was not broken um, and I did get my uh, uh, memory back, although I don't remember much about that day. That's still pretty much gone. Um, but I, I want to talk about how to make a big tone at the piano with ease and efficiency. And first I want you to go to the piano and I want you to make as big a sound as possible. So play four notes, play four notes, and just see how much tone you can make. And sometimes when I have students do this, I, I'll see them do this, and the sound is a little, a little bit limited. Now let me try doing the same thing and let's see if there's any differences in the two motions. Of course you can see right away that I am making a significant follow through. Now let's step over to my uh, Newton's Cradle here. I keep this on the piano because it shows, it shows so much about piano technique. And uh, you know how it works. So you pull it back, you make a preparatory motion and then it has this transfer of energy across these little ball bearings. And let's watch what happens when I do the same thing and block the motion at the other end. Now, let me demonstrate this at the piano. And what I just did was I displaced probably 20 or 30 pounds of pressure at the keyboard, but when I, uh, and and remember, for every action, there's an opposite reaction. So when I displace that pressure, I stopped the motion from following through. And if you were playing a sport and you went to throw something and you did, you did a wind-up kind of motion, a preparatory motion, and you stopped your arm as you let go, of course, um, you're going to be tight. You're not going to get any uh, distance in whatever you're throwing because the follow through is such an important part of that motion. And that's exactly what happens when I'm playing. So if I want to play a big chord, you see that my wrists are relaxed and that I'm following through. And while I wouldn't want to dictate the height, the, the distance that I follow through is going to be somewhat proportional to the speed of, and depth of attack. So probably my height of the top of my arm is going to be higher than uh, the top of the fallboard. Now, let's watch where we started with the Rachmaninoff, and you'll notice how much my hands follow through. And I would be fascinated to know how many pounds of pressure I move in this little excerpt, but I would guess that I'm moving several hundred pounds of pressure in just playing these handful of measures. through because it both keeps me relaxed and it helps cushion the sound so that it's not harsh and it helps me have the capacity to play 
uh, you know, four and a half minutes in the style of aggressive big piano playing. Without that uh, follow through, I won't have the endurance and I will be tight and I'm going to injure myself. And I'm going to injure the audience's ears because the sound will not be ringing, um, it will be harsh. Now, there are other aspects that I will cover in other videos, but the most important uh, today is to look at the follow through motion you're making with your wrist. And amazingly, when I'm playing slow, I make the same motion. But when I play it fast, it's the same thing, but now sped up. So work on your wrists, work on these motions. I like to have students just play big chords. Once those wrists are fluid and relaxed, you will be liberated to have a big tone with big ease.